Hey everyone, welcome back. So today's tutorial is this smoked out winged liner. As you can see here, I've got two different hairstyles and two different shades of lipstick and both are quite contrasting looks with the same eye makeup. I'm going to be using these natural foundation sticks by Hot Makeup. If I zoom in, you can see in the center they've got an anti-shine control powder core. So these are designed to dissolve excess oil. As you can see, I've actually got eyelash extensions on. I was my sister's model for a course that she was doing. We'll be adding on top of these for added drama. It sounds a lot, but it is going to work for the look. So more about that when we come to it. So I've applied a slightly lighter colour under my eyes, down the centre of my face, and then a slightly darker shade on the rest of my skin. And using my Mascara 3D Perfector sponge, I'm going to push that into the skin. Now in my experience, all stick foundation formulas tend to be quite cakey, and I find the best way to work with them so that your skin still looks like skin, but you get that nice full coverage, is to use a damp sponge to really work it into the skin. So you want to be quite forceful with it, you really want to press it into the skin and this is going to give you that nice flawless and seamless texture. But if you are of a drier skin, definitely moisturise well before you apply a stick foundation, otherwise it will cling to any dry skin. Next I'm taking this cream contour colour in Stone by Mascara Beauty and my Zoeva 103 Definer Buffer Brush and I'm going to stipple that into the hollows of the cheeks which is this section here. So I've applied the colour where I want it and then I'm stippling directly over that area, working it into the skin. The idea is to keep that shadow in the hollows of the cheeks and then stipple your brush backwards and forwards directly over where you've applied that colour. You don't want to migrate the colour too much, otherwise you're going to end up with a muddy mess. Then once you're happy with the placement, you then want to go back over with your beauty blender to make it seamless and that's going to give you a much more natural finish. Now we are going for something that's a little bit more than your natural day look, but again you still want it to look like your hollows have got that natural shadow to them. Don't forget, your sponge will have absorbed a little bit of your foundation and that's going to help to diffuse your contour. Next I'm taking the Mascara Beauty Contour Colour in Ash. For me, this colour is a little bit more on the grey side and that's what we want when we're creating that shadow down the sides of our nose. We don't want it to be warm and orangey, we definitely want it to resemble a shadow which is naturally going to make your nose appear smaller. Going back to the original contour colour which is Stone, I'm applying this in the temple area and blending it and this is going to give us the illusion of a higher cheekbone. Then going back to my buffer brush and Stone again, I'm applying this around the hairline. When you're using medium to full coverage foundations, it can make the face look very flat and one tone. So we just want to bring back that dimension so our forehead doesn't look large and flat, it's got shape as does the nose and cheeks. Next I'm going in with the Amazing Concealer. This one is the Illuminate version, you know I'm a fan of the original. This one contains small light reflecting particles. So the idea is it bounces light back from your eyes which deflects from any dark circles. You can work this in with a sponge or you can just blend it in with your finger. To set that in place I'm using my Vichy Demo Blend Translucent Powder and I'm using that on the sponge and I'm pressing that directly over the area that I've applied the concealer. I will also use what's left on the sponge to apply that to my forehead and down the centre of my face just to get rid of any shine. But actually I'm quite impressed with the anti-shine core in the foundation stick because normally with a stick foundation your skin's left looking very oily whereas mine looks very matte. Using this fan brush by Iconic London, I'm dusting off any excess powder. To fill in my brows, I'm using my Dago Della Palma High Precision Brow Pencil. This is so similar to the Anastasia Beverly Hills pencil. It contains a spoolie one end. The pencil itself is very fine, so it allows you to draw hair-like marks into your brows. What I prefer about this pencil over the ABH ones is that this is slightly harder, it's longer wearing and it also doesn't deposit too much colour so you can press a bit firmer to get that colour on, whereas the ABH ones for me are a bit softer so if you apply too much pressure your brows come out too dark. The other positive thing for me with this particular pencil is that shade number 13 is super ashy and that's what I originally loved about the ABH pencils but this one is even more ashy which really matches my natural brow hair colour. To give my brows a nice crisp clean finish, I'm going in with some concealer. I've chosen to use the Born This Way concealer because it's slightly thinner in consistency, which is going to give us the most natural finish. And I'm using my MAC 212 brush which I got from Glambot and it's great for going along the brows because it's got that nice flat edge to it. Now to make the brows look more textured, I'm using a clear brow gel, this is the Ready Set Brow Clear Brow Gel by Benefit, and I'm combing the hairs upwards, and this is just going to make sure they stay in place, but also so that you can see the hairs. Next I'm taking this Graphic Eyes Eyeliner by Zoeva, this is from their Black Box Collection, and I'm applying this along the waterline, and as you can see it's so inky and so soft, it really does 
deposit the colour beautifully and it's waterproof so it stays in place. So this is the pencil that I'm going to be using to give us that beautiful smoke underneath the eyes. So in small sections I'm running that pencil between the lower lashes and then using my Crown C408 Chisel Shader Brush I'm pulling that colour down and smoking it out. I'd advise only coming down a small amount first and then building it up to what you're comfortable with. Now I'm going to bring mine down a little bit further because I'm going to apply a small line to the very top lash line. We're going to have that balance. But that's something to bear in mind if you're not going to be applying eyeliner to your top lid. I'm now going in with the Kat Von D Tattoo Eyeliner. So this is a reversed winged liner, meaning it's connecting with that lower lash line. So the direction of my flick is coming up as though it's continued from my lower eyelid. Then taking my Blank Canvas Cosmetics E27 brush, I've run the tip over the cold pencil and I'm now smudging that underneath the flick. I'm making sure that connects with the lower lash line so we've got that nice reversed winged liner. I'm also smoking that out underneath the tear duct. And then going back in with my Kat Von D tattoo liner, I'm creating a nice sharp point at the inner corner. This is going to give us that nice precision at the very tip and the very inner corner and that nice smoke in between. I'm now taking a liquid liner by Lancome and using that foam tip I'm pressing that into the root of the lashes. To apply some mascara to my bottom eyelashes I'm using Pure Cosmetics Triple Threat Mascara. The wand is super tiny and it allows you to coat every single tiny lash. I've cut up some Eldora M104 lashes and I'm applying 5 individual sections to each eye. So as I've already got lash extensions on, I would recommend that you apply a natural strip lash first and then go in with these small pieces to achieve the same look. If you want to see this in a bit more detail, then check out my Kendall Jenner inspired makeup look or you can check out my how to apply false eyelashes tutorial. I'm now taking this Artist Rouge lipstick by Makeup Forever in the shade M301. I actually thought this was going to be more red than it came out, it's a little bit more of a raspberry shade but it's okay because I'm going to be going over it with a red lip gloss. So feel free to go with whatever colour you like. I'm also going to be showing you this with a nude lip. Over that I'm applying this lip gloss by Lime Crime in Candy Apple. I don't think this is available anymore but there are loads of different lip glosses out there with red glitter in. Taking another brush by Iconic London and this blush by Makeup Geek in the colour Spellbound which is a little bit sun bleached but I'm using it anyway. I'm applying this to the back half of the cheeks. So this is look number one with the red lips and the straight hair. For the nude lip, I've removed the red and I'm not going in with any lipstick. Instead, I'm going straight on with this long wear lip topper by Jouer Cosmetics in Skinny Dip. And this adds the perfect gleam to naked lips. So that's the look with straight hair and this is if you want to change it up and add some braids and curls. You'd be pleased to know I filmed the tutorial for this hairstyle and that will be coming next week. Thank you all for watching. Please give the tutorial a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. You can now hit the subscribe button on screen and you can subscribe for free. You can also click on my previous tutorials if you haven't already seen them. And don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.